Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation with complex numbers. Complex numbers are complicated and this makes it more complicated, doesn't it? No, not really. We have z cubed plus z equals 1 plus square root of 3i all over 2 and we're going to be solving for z. I'll be presenting three methods even though not all methods will be complete. Warning. Okay, first method. We could use the cubic formula, right? And how does the cubic formula work? You can kind of come up with something like this, a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. Remember, this is an identity and we just used it in another video, actually, which is going to come up in one hour on cyber math. Anyways, so yes, I recorded earlier, but it's going to come up later. So from here, if you call this z, you, and comparing this to the original equation from here, you get a, b, and a cubed plus b cubed, which gives you a system which is linear, I mean quadratic, not cubic. And then you can solve for a, b, and then put it together, uh, like adding them up will give you z. But that's going to give you one of the solutions. The other ones you can find uh, by many different ways. But this is not a good method. I don't think so, right? That's why it's the first method. It's long, cumbersome, painful, I don't know, time-consuming. Let's proceed with the second one. For my second method, I'm going to replace z with r e to the i theta because that's what a complex number in, is in polar form, right? And notice that we have z cubed plus z equals 1 plus root 3i over 2. Hmm. Can we write it as 1 half plus root 3 over 2 times i? And what does that remind you? Ooh, this is something that we should know. This is the cosine of 60 or cosine pi over 3. And this is sine of 60, which is sine pi over 3. Remember, cosine 60 is the same as sine 30, which is 1 half. That's how I remember it. Anyways, so now this can be written in polar form as e to the power i times pi over 3. Beautiful. We were able to write z in polar form. We were able to write our constant in polar form. Let's put it together and let's make it all polar. So now, if you put it together, we're going to get something like this. r e to the i theta cubed plus r e to the i theta equals e to the i times pi over 3. But wait a minute, where is the r? r is 1 because this is a complex number with modulus 1. You hopefully knew that, right? Cosine and sine, come on, you know the identity. So I'm thinking about this problem like I have some r's and r cubes, right? I can kind of write it like this. But wait a minute, I'm supposed to get a single r like no r or r equals 1. So don't you think that r needs to be 1 in this case? Probably, right? So r equals 1, let's proceed with that. We get a much simpler equation, and then we can actually solve it. You know how? It's going to be fun. Now, as is, uh, I don't think there's an easy way to solve it. Maybe I'm missing it, and please let me know if you see it. I don't always see things, right? But I want to expand it. Sometimes when you have no ideas, just write the formulas. And Euler's formula gives us the following. This is cosine of 3 theta plus i times sine of 3 theta. Kind of convert it back into the standard form. And guess what? Now you can easily add those, real by real and imaginary by imaginary. And of course, I'll do the same thing here. But instead of using cosine pi over 3, I'm just going to write 1 half and root 3 over 2i. Right? That's what it is numerically. Now, take a look. Take a good look. Cosine 3 theta and cosine theta, we can put it together because those are the real parts. So kind of put in parentheses to emphasize that, hey, those are separate things. And then sine 3 theta and sine theta they make up the imaginary part and multiply by i however you want it like anyway is fine and then write it like that cool cool now take a look if two complex numbers are equal then their real parts have to be equal right so this is supposed to be one half this is supposed to be root three over two wait a minute we only have a single variable but we came up with two equations what's that supposed to mean means that you can solve each equation and find the intersection. But don't worry, that's a lot of work, isn't it? That's why I kind of did it for you. And I'll show you what I got from here. But you can definitely check it out. Obviously, to solve this equation, there's a formula for cosine of 3 theta. Or you can use, I don't know if that's going to help though. You can use something called sum to product. We'll get a product. I don't know if that's going to be helpful. I think so, because that's going to give you the 2 theta and the theta from the difference in sum. And obviously, if you get something like, let's say, cosine 2 theta, there's a formula for it. If you get sine 2 theta, there's a formula for it. But by the way, so by using those double angle identities, you're going to be able to reduce it to a nicer form. And anyways, that's too painful, isn't it? 
So let me just give you the solutions. Are you okay with that? Hopefully. And from here, tada, theta becomes 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. n is an integer, so we can add multiples of 2 pi to this. Make sense? Wait a minute, we didn't finish the first method. Should we get the same thing? I think we should, if we solved it. Go ahead and give it a try. All right? Third method. The third method is just going to be awesome because, I don't know, I thought about it, so it should be good, right? So I'm going to first split these up, like separate it. And then I'm thinking, obviously, this is where the pro pro idea of this problem came from. Come on, guys. That's how I'm able to kind of reverse engineer an idea and come up with a problem. That's why these things are hard to see. So I'm going to write the 1 half as 1 minus 1 half. Like, where on earth does that come from, right? Okay, it comes from me. And then we're going to go ahead and do it as follows. We're going to separate this. We're going to write this as 1 plus negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And guess what? This is just another complex number. A well-known number. You should know this. Do you know it? Okay, let's see. This is actually, if you look at the cosine and sine, again, the modulus is 1 in this case. The cosine gives you a negative value, but the sine is still positive. Kind of like 60 degrees, but in a different quadrant. Hmm, what quadrant could that be? Second, yes, because sine must be positive. If you put 60 on the second quadrant, you need to separate from 180. That gives you 120, which is 2 pi over 3. So yes, our argument here is 2 pi over 3. What, so what did I get? I got the following. 1 plus e times, I mean e to the power i times 2 pi over 3, which is this equals, wait a minute, what am I going to do with the 1 though? I'm going to set this equal to z cube plus c, okay, that's my next step, but what am I going to do with the 1? Okay, use your brain, use your smarts. If you know complex numbers, you, know, you need to know, you need to know how 1 is expressed in the complex word. e to the power i times 2 pi. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Now we're ready to rock and roll, I mean to solve the problem, right? So, let's go ahead and do this. z cubed plus z equals e to the power i times 2 pi over 3 cubed. So I kind of did the 1 third and 3 trick. You got that? Okay, it's mathematics. And then that. Look at this. If this is z, this is z cubed. Awesome. But that, does that mean z equals that? Obviously. But let's put everything on the same side. And let's call this number something. How about w? I love w. So now we get z cubed plus z equals w cubed plus w. What does that tell you? Put on the same side and factor. Let's do it. z cubed minus w cubed plus z minus w equals 0. Remember, difference of two cubes. Please, come on, you can do that. z squared plus z w plus w squared plus 1 times z minus w. Wow, that's such a long problem, right? I love the third method, don't you? Now, z minus w is a common factor. Take it out and deal with a quadratic. I'm going to put the w first. You'll see in a little bit why I'm doing that. And now, here's the thing. It's time to back substitute. But before that, let's do something else. First of all, if you set this equal to 0, you get z equals w. But what is w? e to the power i times 2 pi over 3. Well, I got one of the solutions. Because remember, I'm trying to solve for z, but w is a constant. Remember that? Okay, cool. And obviously, w can also be written as negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. Don't forget that. Now, second equation is a little more complicated. Just a tad bit, right? From here, we can basically get z by using the quadratic formula. The coefficient of z is w. By the way, w is a constant, so this is quadratic in z, whatever that means, negative w plus minus w squared minus 4ac. Remember the formula, and then simplify it, and you'll get something like this. Negative w plus minus the square root of negative 3w squared minus 4. Wow, such a negative number, divide by 2. Great. What am I going to do with this? Well, let's evaluate negative 3w squared minus 4. Can I just give it to you? It's going to become negative 5 halves plus root 3 over root 3 root 3 over 2i. If you don't believe that, go ahead and do it for yourself. z becomes 1 half minus root 3 over 2i plus minus the square root of negative 5 halves plus 3 root 3 over 2i. What is the square root of this weird, weird number? There are two square roots. Anyways, I don't know, but you can definitely evaluate it. It shouldn't be too hard. It should be nice. But let's go ahead and take a look at some stuff. Wow. We knew one of the solutions was this one, the 2 pi over 3 stuff, remember? But the other ones are like, wow, this is mind-blowing, isn't it? Using a little bit of trigonometry. You remember that? 3 root 3 over 5? Yeah, that came up before. And this is where the roots are. Isn't that awesome? 
a visual. Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.